What's going on guys, Bengal again here, and today we're going to be talking about the 2022 NFL Draft Class. I've got it in Madden 22. This is created by me, and it's based off some of the research that I've done, some of the players that I've been watching over the summer scouting, talking to guys that I trust within the scouting community, and then looking at certain positional rankings and scouting reports and things like that from sources that I trust and have trusted for a long time now. So we got a lot of a lot of players in here, a lot of real players. I think you're really going to like the class if you're using it. Is it on PS5? I'll show you guys how to download it, and then we'll go through some of the positions, some of the top players, things like that. So within scouting, and this could change in the scouting update, the class is still going to be usable, but there are a couple of ways. So if you're in scouting, you have your auto-generated class already brought up. What will happen for the first time when scouting pops up, they're like, hey, do you want to use a class from the file share or one that you have already? We're just using auto-generated class. You can click import the file if you've already downloaded it from the file share i'll show you how to do that in a second or you can click download a class from the file share you'll see my class but if you've already done auto generated and you're like oh my goodness i want to use this class now with the real players you can click the left stick and then that option will pop up again now the file share the madden share is kind of buggy sometimes that happens it just doesn't connect so how do we bypass that we can go back to the main menu go to settings Go to share and manage files and then download community files. This is usually a little bit better. You won't disconnect quite as much. It's a little bit buggy within franchise itself. And then you can see a whole ton of different things. Draft class over if you hit R1 or RB if you're on Xbox, which I guess you won't be downloading this class because this is on PS5 only. I can't get it onto PS4. I can't get it onto Xbox. I might try and arrange something to where at least the players are in there and the overalls might be correct but to actually get the entire class ported over i would have to do height and weight and name and overall and face skin tone and face all of that i had to create so it, it was super super time consuming and i just can't do that on P a ps4 and xbox and all these different things what ea should do is find a way to get the community files all synced up together across different platforms it's possible and it's not in the game so it's not my fault it is what it is but this is on ps5 the name is gene dangus currently has about 1800 downloads 15 likes no dislikes so if you guys can download the class make sure to like it that will get it rising up the ranks as the number one class i've seen this class from this guy I'll be honest, it's not even close. Top two rounds complete. Congratulations. I have an entire draft, and it's full of players who are very, very likely to be drafted. We'll talk about it in a second. Like, I can't have everybody in there. We don't know how things are going to play out over the course of the season. Players will be added and taken out and adjusted. Overalls will change. Development traits will change. It's going to feel very real the way an actual draft class would across the course of a year things are going to be altered based on play week in and week out so i am going to be pretty vigilant about updating this class but again it is in the draft class section under the name gene dangus 2022 nfl draft bangle that's how you get it you click it you download it i can't download it because it's mine i already have it so once you've downloaded that class from the main menu again left stick and import local file is usually the way to go but let's talk about this we'll talk about the top 10. the quarterbacks are in a really really interesting spot i guess we'll just shift over to qb here so it isn't like last year where it's like we knew trevor lawrence was going to go number one overall the entire year that was like pretty much a given we knew justin fields would be in the conversation knew trey lance could get in the conversation and then zach wilson was kind of this name that came out of nowhere that could happen again this year for sure but right now, there isn't one player in the class where I'm like, I'm confident they're gonna know they're gonna go number one overall. Sam Howell is kind of like a baby Baker Mayfield in a lot of ways. That'd be my best comp. And I don't really love comparisons. I think Sam Howell to Baker Mayfield's a pretty good one. But you know, depending on how this year goes, a lot could change. Spencer Rattler was benched for a portion of last season and then came back and was actually pretty good. He has all the potential in the world. Malik Willis maybe has the most potential of any player in the class but he needs to develop a lot in order to consider you know being a top end of the first round guy matt corral out of ole miss super entertaining player not the biggest guy not the most ideal quarterback build as you'll notice with some of these guys that can affect where a player is drafted 
Carson Strong, big time arm, small time school at Nevada. Similar thing, I think, with Jordan Love at Utah State. Like, this season is going to be really telling. JT Daniels, I think, has a really, really good shot to have a huge season and maybe even get Heisman consideration and could be drafted as early as this, you know, one of the top three QBs off the board. Keaton Slovis. I watch him at USC and I go, wow. When I was watching Amon Ross St. Brown, I was doing my scouting on him. I go, wow, Keaton Slovis is making some insane throws. And then you'll see him completely not know what he's doing the next play. So if he can figure it out and have a consistent season, Keaton Slovis could be a top end of the first round guy. Desmond Ritter could sneak into the first round. Phil Jerkovic, I think, has big time potential. Derek King's exciting. Like, it's going to be a really interesting year, but we have a lot of different quarterbacks in this class all the way down to Embry Jones, really. And also, I will note, some of these names are not allowed. Like Michael Penix Jr., or Michael Penix Jr., P-E-N-I-X is his name. Now, the game's like, oh, do you mean penis? And I don't, but can't do his name. So some of these names have been edited. I think another big example of that is with Brenton Cox. Can't do Cox, even though it's a real name. If anyone has a last name, gay, can't do gay. Some of the names had to be changed in order to get around the like blocked word system, but did the best that I could. Brees Hall is in here. I also tried to make each face different within the position. Like some, there are some repeats like Zamir White and Cameron Harris, I guess are close. I don't think it's exactly the same face, but it is pretty close. But even though some of these faces repeat, like Mo Ibrahim and Tyler Goodson have the same face, it also looks like they look. So that was a really big focus as well. I tried to actually make the class feel real. I tried to make these players look how they look with their actual face, at least with these uh, previews. So it's a lot of fun. Receiver's gonna change a lot because there are some really, really, really talented receivers in this class. I don't think quite as good as last year, but it's still some really talented guys. And I think the biggest thing with this class with the receivers are the players that are injured. George Pickens would be in the conversation for receiver one. Big time injury. Tours ACL not going to play this year. Or may maybe we'll sneak back in, but likely to miss a lot of time. Justin Ross could be as high as receiver one in this class. Terrible, weird spinal injury. He's been medically cleared, but we don't know the long-term effects. We don't know how he's going to play this year. So Justin Ross is a big question mark, but has all the talent in the world. A lot of these receivers could fly up the board. Some really, really talented players in this class. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Tight end's interesting. I mean, there's no Kyle Pitts in this class, but Julio Billingsley is an incredible athlete, more of a receiver than a tight end, really. And then Jalen Weidermeyer has that, like, huge tight end build, but is a pretty good athlete as well. I'm not going to show you any ratings in this video. I don't want to spoil it. It's a pretty strong tackle class. Kenyon Green's going to transition to tackle this year. He's a stud guard. I have him at tackle because he's probably going to play tackle this year for the Aggies. But if he doesn't perform well at tackle, maybe I move him back to guard in the class. Maybe I bring his overall down a little bit. But I've basically taken how I would have rated him as a guard and just changed his position to tackle. So that's where he fits in the class. Probably a round one guy at this point. Trevor Penning, really fun player, super freak athlete, and goes to Northern Iowa. Maybe even a better prospect than Spencer Brown, who ended up going, what, round three last year out of Northern Iowa, who played right tackle to the Bills. Really strong tackle class right now. It's a pretty strong offensive line class based on the overalls and developments, I will say. I'm making the offensive line very draftable. So whereas in Madden, I don't feel like historically you've been rewarded for drafting offensive linemen. You will be rewarded for drafting offensive linemen in this class. I can promise you there are some O-linemen very much worth drafting. Defensive end is kind of a weird, uh, weird spot too. Like Kayvon Thibodeau, I think, is pretty clearly the best edge rusher in the class right now. After that, there are a lot of different question marks between whether Tyreek Smith takes a step, takes a big jump. Same thing with Zach Harrison. Will McDonald, I think, led the NCAA in sacks last year, at least for Power 5 at Iowa State with 10.5 in the kind of weird COVID season. Will McDonald could end up being really, really good. Has pretty good size, pretty good athlete. It's going to be really interesting to see who flies up the board. Adam Anderson's a great example too. This guy was a rotational player that is going to end up getting a lot more playing time now. And he flashed a lot last year at Georgia. So there's potential that Adam Anderson could end up being 
one of the top edge rushers off the board. Uh, Ali Gay is G-A-Y-E, but of course, can't have Gay in there, so the A had to be taken out. Jermaine Johnson's another guy. If you guys watched Last Chance U, he was a former top recruit, ended up at, uh, what, East Mississippi Community College, and then ended up transferring to Georgia. Still a former five-star, and then transferred to Florida State. Didn't really get a ton of playing time, but still flashed in certain opportunities. Now, with Florida State edge rushers moving out in recent years, he's going to be able to start this year probably. And who knows, maybe he's got a great year. Maybe he really rises up the ranks and becomes, you know, in first round consideration the same way a guy like Jalen Phillips did last year. But um, this D tackle class is better than last year, even if it's not amazing. DeMarvin Leal is pretty incredible. It's a better linebacker class than last year too. There is definitely some good value with a lot of these players. So I think you guys are going to be happy with that. Some of these guys are edge rushers too. Like you could call Drake Jackson or George Karloftis or Nick Benito, especially even Kingsley, um, AKA JJ might even end up changing that to JJ Egbenare or Enigbare. Um, here's the thing. For class balancing, there are three, four outside linebackers. I wish there was the distinction of edge versus off ball. Like Nicobe Dean is an off ball linebacker, but is likely going to play, you know, stack side potentially. And then Brenton Cox is an edge rusher and he's a pure edge rusher. He's never going to play off ball really, even though he's best standing up in my opinion. Like for balancing purposes, they're just going to stick it outside linebacker. It's just kind of how it is. You just have to make the distinction yourself. And I've tried to really make it so their archetype matches what type of player they are so no one gets confused. Not every player in this class is real. We need players to actually take a step up. Like Leslie Colbert out of Michigan, not a real player. Not a real player. But there are a lot of cornerbacks, like all the way down to... Let's see here. All the way down to... Dejon Warren, I want to say, out of Jackson State, which is where Dion coaches now, by the way. Yeah, Kobe, Rip, Joey Porter Jr. You guys remember Joey Porter, the outside linebacker, edge rusher for the Steelers and the Dolphins? This is his son, plays corner at Penn State. Actually pretty good. A lot of these players could move way up. I can't have everybody. Need the season to start. Need to see who's playing well, who's going to earn their way into the class. It's a pretty strong cornerback class. If you're a team in need of a corner, there are some really, really, really good corners. Like even Roger McCreary is a really, really good player, but it just happens to be where he is in the class. It doesn't go down in order for every position. That Like this guy is the highest overall with the highest development trait. That will end up being the case a lot of the time, especially with Tarek Singley. But it's not just like, let's just say he's an 80. It doesn't go 79, 78, 77, 76, 75, you know, or whatever the number would be and periodically work down. Maybe Martin Emerson, wouldn't let me do Emerson. I had to take out an E. Maybe he's a 73. Maybe Nehemiah Pritchett to 76, which is not the case. Those are just made up numbers, but it's not always the case where the, you know, the player listed above is the highest overall. It's a pretty good safety class as well. Kyle Hamilton, freak athlete. Couldn't really get a face I was happy with for him, but that was about the closest, I think, that I could have done. Jalen Catalan could be a really, really fun player in this class. But yeah, I think you guys are really going to enjoy the draft class overall. A bunch of really, really good players, a bunch of draftable players. It is a strong draft class, probably about as strong as one of the strongest classes. You'll see the CPU auto generate and a bunch of really good dev traits as well. I wanted to make it fun. I don't think it's too overpowered, but there are a bunch of really, really good players in the class. And I think it probably will end up being less OP as the season goes on. But that's gonna do it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you use your class. Hope you use the class. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you like it. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. It's insane. I hit it at the park. Ben Bones. See me high step to the end zone. My life like a game Nintendo. Play with the best. Let them know. Get off the track. The train's coming through. Yeah. Promise you get in my way. Then you best believe I'ma just run over you. Yeah. Yeah. I'ma turn taking it back to the house. Defense a joke. I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.